Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. Um, someone asked me in an email a little while ago, um, actually a couple of days ago, um, if I was using a different version of the GIMP because they looked at my toolbar and saw that I was using um, a toolbar that they didn't have. Now I'm not actually using the most recent version of GIMP. If you click on help and about um, this will jump up which will tell you what version you're currently using now I'm using 2.4.2 um, as far as I'm aware I think we're now up to 2.4.5 possibly even 0.6 so this isn't the most up-to-date version the reason I'm not using the most up-to-date version is basically everything in the 2.4 series um, that gets released from now on will just be bug fixes and what that means is if somebody has um, raised an issue with the GIMP where it crashes when you run a certain plugin or it crashes when you try to use a certain filter or there's some sort of problem with uh, that a, a menu has been typed in incorrectly or whatever um, then what they'll do is they'll release an updated version and the uh, the third decimal will um, will be upgraded um, so 2.4.3 for example would deal with some bugs that my version has and 2.4.4 will deal with some bugs that 2.4.3 has but it doesn't add any new buttons or functions um, that won't come until 2.5 or 2.6 um, so why am I only using 2.4.2 well the GIMP doesn't automatically update itself so it's a little bit of a pain for me to bother but also because my GIMP doesn't crash, I haven't come across any of these bugs, um, I see no reason to update it really. Until my GIMP crashes, I'm not going to update it. Anyway, sorry, I'm waffling. But the reason they said they thought I was using a different version was because I have some buttons here um, that you might not be familiar with, that you might not have seen. Um, for example, these ones along here, um, you might not have these. And for example, these here, you might not have. Um, so what I've done, I've hopefully... Um, I think this is the kind of default setting and I can't really remember. I looked at Encelec's video um, for selection tools where he uses the same this kind of setup. This might be your default setting uh, and this is very different to mine or slightly different to mine. Um, and I'm just going to show you how you can change yours into one that's more custom made for your purposes. Well the first thing I don't like about this version is that it's too fat. Um, when I open an image, I want to have as big a space as possible on my desktop to work on. So the easiest way to um, to do that is very simply just grab this edge and pull it in a little bit. So I'm only um, five icons wide. So I'm starting to get there already, but you'll notice I've got some other buttons here. Now the way I get these new buttons is by using this tab here. Um, now you'll notice if I just drag these out, and um, that's my tools tab, and if I drag my brushes tab out, um, and get rid of those. Um, you can see that I've got the paintbrush and the paintbrush selected here. But to get these new buttons, I'm going to need a new tab. So I click on this new tab button here, and I'm going to go to add tab. And oh, sorry, clicked on the wrong thing there. Just get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to click on the tab button and add tab, and I'm going to go down to tools right at the bottom. And you notice that this will jump up and this is similar to the layers dialog in that we've got the names of some tools and we've got a little eyeball to show that these are visible and hopefully you can guess what comes next because I like to use stuff like color balance and hue and saturation every time I make those visible they're now available on my toolbar so I actually quite like these ones I like colorize and I like brightness and contrast um, I do quite like threshold because it's good for um, pop art. Um, I do quite like levels because it's good for manipulating black points and things. And if you've seen any of my tutorials, you should know by now that I'm a bit of a curves junkie. So I'm definitely going to have curves on there. Um, so you can see some of the ones that I've got lined up there. And there are some of these tools that I just don't use. I mean, this measure I've never used. So I don't really need that clogging up space on my precious toolbar. So I don't use measure, so I can get rid of that. Um, I've never really used a line, so I could get rid of that if I wanted. Um, I do like my um, crop and rotate and shear and perspective, so I'll leave those in. Um, and I do sometimes use things like blur and sharpen and smudge, so I'm going to keep those. But things like the perspective 
um, clone I don't need um, I don't bother using heal because um, I like to clone stuff so I can toggle this for the the, the buttons that I'm going to need the tools that I'm going to need on my desktop and um, you can see I've actually been a bit zealous with this one um, the one I actually use does have things like those stamps on but I'm just you know for the example of showing you how to get rid of stuff you don't really need or want um, just picking some to make invisible but it's just as simple as that if you just um, open up that tools um, tab going to add tab and tools then you can just configure the buttons that actually appear on your um, GIMP interface um, so to the person asked it's not a new um, version you probably are using a more up-to-date version than the one I'm using because I don't update mine very regularly um, but it's very very handy um, it's not as handy as learning the shortcut keys um, but in this case I mean having the appropriate buttons on your desktop rather than having to go through layer and colors and whatever to find the tools and these, it's just nice to have these little buttons available so that's just a little quick tutorial and I hope you find that very helpful